Good morning, everyone. In my college days, I learned a song, a very simple song. Most of you may be knowing that song, but I would like to sing that song today. Open my eyes, Lord. Let this be your prayer today. We want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we love Him. Open my ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. The Sunday before the last, I was preaching from the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and I would like you to open that chapter, Ephesians chapter 1. A wonderful chapter. Apostle Paul is so filled with the realities of his being in Christ Jesus. He is literally overflowing. He is overflowing with the assurance of the surety of what God has done for him in Christ Jesus. You see, we live in a world where, you know, there's a lot of emphasis. When I say world, we live at a time when, when the churches, there's a lot of emphasis on what we should do for God. And in fact, we should do, isn't it? Uh, but the order is very important. You see, uh, William Carey said, attempt great things, uh, expect, great, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. And there's a lot of truth in that. But that is not what should come to the life of a believer initially. Because if a person expects great things from God and attempts great things for God without understanding what God has done for them, such people would be under tremendous strain. They would get fatigued, burnt out, because they are attempting great things for God. The great uh, author, Watchman Nee, wrote a small book, Sit, Walk, Stand, based on the book of Ephesians. And uh, I really like the thesis of that, that book. The thesis of that book, I mean, the main point of that book was what he was trying to say there. There is an order. First, we have to sit. <laughs> It means we have to realize what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. That Ephesians chapter 2, that God has seated us with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. First, we must understand what God has done for us. And then he says, that only then we can sit, walk. Only then we can walk with him in a meaningful way. And only as we sit and walk, we can stand against the schemes of the enemy. So Ephesians chapter 2, then sit, you know, 1 and 2, sit. Then uh, chapter 4 and 5, you know, is walking. And chapter 6, stand against the schemes of the enemy. Many people are trying to stand without even, without sitting, without walking. They are standing, they are fighting with the enemy. 
and they will be they will they may have to run like sons of skiva <laughs> the, the demons may jump on them <laughs> they may have to run for their life because they don't know what christ has done for us uh, done for them and they are not walking with the lord and so how can they stand so i really believe that there is wonderful truth in this sit walk stand i mean so therefore uh, you said again these are ways people try to teach us so some of you please don't postpone obeying the lord for the year 10 of your life saying that uh, brother i'm sitting for the first 10 years i will walk after 10 years no that's not the meaning this only means that the, the primacy of revelation in the life of a believer so that they can walk apostle paul there is a pattern to how he taught in the letters generally we see the book of ephesians we see the book of philippians colossians he emphasizes on what god has done for us in christ jesus initially the initial chapters so ephesians 1 2 3 what god has done ephesians 4 therefore live in the you know what a great calling god has called you you know colossians 1 and 2 our position in christ colossians 3 and 4 you know therefore set your mind on things above and you know the holy walk even philippians so all of this uh, uh, so there is a pattern which we can see whenever apostle paul writes in the book of romans also after writing 11 chapters then he writes chapter 12 verse 1 therefore in view of his great mercies offer yourselves as a living sacrifice just imagine a believer coming and he is keeping on offering without really you know understanding what god has done for them in christ jesus i also talked to you and i would like to repeat that great wonderful famous verse which apostle paul tells to the people in corinth to the to the believers in corinth so i want you to complete that verse yeah i has not seen ear has not heard nor has it entered the mind of man what god has prepared for those who love him please 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 show that verse first corinthians chapter 2 was 9 you see usually when this verse many people know this verse okay so me included <laughs> i also used to think you know what god has prepared great things for me you know no i has seen no ear has heard you know it hasn't even occurred to people what great things god has prepared you know what and so somebody will ask me yeah, brother what are the things uh, i don't know but they are great things you know they are really great uh, you know no one can fathom is great is wonderful no but in that wonderful things can you tell some wonderful things no i don't know but some great things i thought this was the meaning of this verse but please read the next verse so paul says for to us god revealed them through the spirit it's not for to us when the new heaven and new earth comes we will realize what are those great things he did not say that paul already knows this to us god revealed them through the spirit for the spirit searches all the things even the depths of god for who among men knows the thoughts of a man except spirit of man which is in him even so the thoughts of god no one knows except the spirit of god now we have received not the spirit of the world but the capital s spirit who is from god please note that so that we may know the things freely given to us by god dear brothers and sisters you and i need to know and realize the things which are freely given to us by god freely we have been given but we have to realize 
How can we realize? How can we realize? Through the Spirit of God. It is the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Holy Spirit has been given to us. One of the purposes of Holy Spirit being given to us is so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. And Paul says few verses earlier that the Spirit has revealed to him. That is why he is so excited. That is what gave him so much resilience. I don't know the name of that uh, toy which, uh, you know, nowadays I'm not seeing that. There's one toy, you, you hit that toy, it will go down and then it will come back, you know, that big one, you know. It's an inflatable thing, so hit it and then it will come back. Paul was somewhat like that. Anybody can hit him. He may come down but he will not be out. He will rebound. He will be back. What is it that gave him such resilience? Nothing. Nothing could beat him. You know, Romans chapter 8, he, he encourages others. So obviously he was encouraged. I presume he was encouraged. He said, who will separate us from the love of Christ? He says, in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Here was Paul. A conqueror. He was convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come. Nothing shall separate him from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. So, so there is something which wonderful things which God has done for us. God wants to make it known. But for that, our eyes need to be opened. Only then we can realize, we can see, spiritually we can see the great things which God has done for us. So, in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, you know, one of the things which we notice is he's so full of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, just note. The first verse itself, two times Christ comes. By the will of God, took saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. <laughs> and uh, verse 2, again he can't not talk about Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord. Jesus Christ, the people who are in love will keep talking about the person whom they love. Now from verse 3 to verse 14, in the Greek text, <laughs> Paul <laughs> wrote in a single sentence. I am amazed, you know, whether in English or Greek, how people can coherently write. I mean, you can break all rules of grammar and write a sentence, you know. But no, a sentence, a proper sentence he has written from verse 3 to verse 14. I want you all to do an exercise today also. Last time I made you do it. Let's read from verse 3 to verse 14. Just, I will read it. You just underline wherever in Christ or in him comes. Okay? Just underline in your Bible. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 4. Just as he chose us in him. Please, please underline this. In Christ and in him also. Okay, Before the foundation of the world. That we would be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us to adoption as sons. Through Jesus Christ. So this through Jesus Christ also is there. To himself. According to the kind intention of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In the beloved. Please underline that. Verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight. He made, us, made known to us the mystery of his will, according to the kind intention which he purposed in him. 
with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of times, that is, the summing up of all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, verse 11, also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, having listened to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. Uh, does any one of you think that this in him is, uh, you know, he's just telling, you know, some people when they speak, they just say, Amen, 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 amen. Uh, like that. You know, they just, as a filler, you know, they use amen, hallelujah. Because the next sentence, if they're not getting... Uh, by the way, when you're praying, I request you all, don't feel pressurized. I don't think there are angels with a gun here. Don't stop for a second, okay? Don't interrupt the flow. The flow has to be maintained. If the flow is maintained, not maintained, God's wrath shall come upon you. Nothing like that. Relax. If you are... You can take some time for the next sentence to come. So, but, uh, and even after this, if somebody prays like that, also don't condemn them. But all I'm trying to say is, many people use words as fillers. Do you think that he was unnecessarily using these words, in him, in him? Very strategically, he's using in him. I am pretty sure that Apostle Paul was using it for some reason. And by the way, not only here, this in him thing, you know, in Christ, uh, in Christ is, in Greek it is en Christo, okay? This in Christ thing is used so many times, you know? It is used, uh, you know, he uses in Pauline letters at least 73 times. Some people give some other number, but okay, this much you can know that the number is pretty high. 73 instances of in Christ. Add to that 12 instances of in him. And now add to that 47 instances of en curios, that means in the Lord. Surely this is an important phrase. Surely we have to understand what Apostle Paul is telling. What is this whole thing about in Christ, in him, in the Lord? Dear brothers and sisters, I tried to understand. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think I have probably only scratched the surface or a little bit. God has enabled me to understand and I am telling you probably if I preach the same message to you next year there may be more things I may be able to tell you but I am not waiting till next year to preach this message you know because you can also ask the Lord this is such an important thing in Christ what does it mean to be in Christ now the matters get slightly more complicated. <laughs> it is not only that we are in Christ, but Christ is in us. There are many verses which say that Christ in us, the hope of glory. Don't you know that his spirit is in you? By the way, not only Christ, there are verses which say God is in us. There are verses which say that his spirit in, is in us. Whatever it is. So Christ is in us. We are in Christ. So, you know, you try to wrap it around with your mind. It gets a little problematic. But one man said something which helps me. <laughs> he said, uh, you see, we are in the air 
and air is in us one <laughs> one man said that no whether that is exactly the thing but it gives me some intellectual help to understand that a thing can be in us and we can be in in some sense okay so uh jemima can you just show that what does it mean to be in christ uh this in gives us some idea of location you see i am in delhi you know i am in or something is in that bucket you know in location now we we are not in ourselves only so we are not alone the minimum see if somebody has come to christ okay somebody is born again that person now is not alone that person has been put in christ colossians chapter 3 verse 2 and 3 Colossians chapter three verses two and three. Apostle Paul says, "Set your mind on things above, not on things that are on earth." Why? For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So we are in Christ. We are in Christ. We are hidden. with christ in god no no the first one so we we are not just in ourselves so if we are in something whatever happens to that something happens to the thing inside also isn't it if i am in christ what happens to christ happens to me what happens to me happens to christ and that really helps me you see um he who touches you touches the apple of my i we are belonging to christ in some way we were uh ephesians let let's let's take ephesians chapter Two verses twelve and thirteen. This was our situation earlier. Okay, remember that you were at that time separate from Christ. So there was a time when we were not in Christ. Okay, you were separate from Christ. You were excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, who were the people of God. You were strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. that was our situation when we were unbelievers but now that we are believers we are not like this we are not excluded from the commonwealth of israel we are we are not the people of god we are uh, having promises we are with god now you know so in christ means that now i am not by myself i am in christ how many of you are happy that you are not by yourselves you are in christ i am so glad that i am in christ sometimes we say lord be with him uh i mean suppose i pray. <laughs> suppose john is here so i pray lord be with him uh, what do you think is happening wasn't the lord with him okay maybe we can articulate slightly better isn't it yeah i would leave the articulation to you lord be with him be with him i am trying to say that be support him help him you know maybe that's what i mean but actually lord is you are in the lord hallelujah there you know 
I am in the Lord. Even if I am in the, uh, you know, uh, he's not just with me. He is in me. I am in him. There is some great reality of uh, the location thing, you know, that I am in Christ. Christ is in me. Please show the PowerPoint. Yeah. So, we are in him. When I say we, please understand, the born again believers, okay? The disciples of Jesus. They are in him and he is in them. So, our position. And because I am in him, I am all of these great blessings comes to me. You see, I am adopted in the Christ, in Christ. I am his uh, son. I am his child. With all the privileges that come with it. I am in the beloved. I am joined heirs with Christ. Now, where is that wonderful verse? Romans chapter 8. I mean, sometimes these things seem too good to be true. I mean, <laughs> is it true? I think we have to pinch ourselves and say, hello, is this true? Sometimes we just like the feeling of a verse. <laughs> Joint hair. Joint. The, okay, but before you like the feeling, what about the truth of it? When you are convinced about the truth, then feelings will come. Suppose, you know, there are many young youngsters sitting here. Suppose one of you gets a call letter from Google. Google, Google, one of the best employers. Now, when will you be happy? See, you only got a letter. You haven't joined. Will you be happy only after you join or will you be happy when you got the letter? Please answer. No, some of you are saying, is it a fake letter? Yeah, it, you know, one of these, uh, I forget, huh, Nidhi Rajdan got a letter from somewhere and she went and, you know, so there can be fake letters also. But, uh, Provided you, you are sure that that is a letter from Google itself. Then when will you start to be happy? I will start to be happy when I get the letter. See, we are joint heirs with Christ. Are we seeing the whole thing now? But I am happy now itself. Provided I realize what it means. So some of you sitting here, what's so great about Google's job? You don't know what Google is. You only think it's a search engine. You, you don't know that it's a wonderful company. You don't know the facilities there. You don't know what all things they give, the salary and every other thing. If you knew, you might have, you might jump right now. You won't wait for the end of the service. You will say, yeah. <laughs> Then, of course, you know, you know, people talk about feelings and everything. I don't know, I might have told this earlier, but let me repeat it. You know, I was going, I was walking in RP Mall along with my wife. It was the time of uh, Olympics. So, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm not a great athlete, but I like you know, sports. I like seeing, watching sports, and I'm a big watcher of sports, and, you know. So, I was following Neeraj Chopra, you know. Neeraj Chopra, Javelin, yeah. And uh, I, you know, from 1984, when I was 13 year old, when P.T. Usha narrowly missed that bronze by 0 0.01 second, you know, we have been waiting for someone to get some medal in athletics. And at last, there is a possibility. Neeraj Chopra is coming. And he throws. And it goes to 89 meters. 
and i am in rp mall and i said yeah my wife is telling what's happening <laughs> what are you doing here relax relax i said how can you relax this is because still you know he had not gold gold because there were few other throwers they could have thrown more than him but yet it was like a great throw my point is when you realize the implications of what has happened then emotions will follow why emotions are not coming is most see i'm not talking of made up emotion anybody can make up an emotion you know i also know that emotion for example if you put right now the song i'm a barbie girl tang tang you know and i you see now the thing is i may not uh, focus on the lyrics but i may i may start tapping my foot so emotions can come with music and all i am not talking of that kind of emotion i am talking of emotions which come after understanding the truth you realize what is this true is this true romans chapter 8 verses 16 and 17 please is this true the spirit himself testifies with our spirit capital s spirit testifies with our small s spirit that we are uh, we are what children really children children of this boss of this universe really do you really believe do you really think that you have been granted you are a child of god do you really believe that do you really think because if it really happened i think it has tremendous implications see i might get some money some healing something from god you know so that any king anybody can give some things to us but it is completely different thing for us to be made children of god children think some time about the implications of being children and then think of the fact that you are children of whom the creator of this universe and you can call him father so this god is not only king he is my father next verse is this true dear brothers and sisters next and then the implication if we are children then naturally the inheritance gets divided amongst the children so we are heirs of god and then by the by christ is also god but then it is written fellow heirs with christ what belongs to christ belongs to me you know i am not trying to cheapen it but by saying the next thing what i am going to say but just so that you can understand there was this pepsi ad which says जो तेरा है वो मेरा है जो मेरा है वो तेरा वट एवर इज यूअर्स इज माइंड मैन वट इज माइंड इज यूअर्स देर इज यू नो वॉट बिलोंग्स टू क्राइस्ट इज माइंड डियर ब्रदर्स इफ यू आर ब्रदर सुनील हैव यू अंडरस्टूड द डेप्थ ऑफ यू नो नो बट आई एम स्टैंडिंग समवेयर यू नो वट इज दिस i am fellow heirs with christ jesus so what does being in christ mean power point that i who was cut off from god now i am in christ no the first point now i am in christ that is my position that is my identity coming to the identity you know when many people ask who are you most people uh, most believers they answer i am an engineer i am a teacher 
No. That's not your identity. That's what you, that's what you do. If people ask me, I won't say I'm a doctor. You know, it's true that <laughs> I practice medicine. Yeah. But that's not my identity. I am a bond servant of Jesus Christ. That's my identity. That's a fact of the matter. I, I, we all surely do some, you know, some people say, I'm a singer. You sing. Very good. You have that talent. You, you are a singer. That, if, if that is your primary identity, people have all kinds of identities. Our primary identity, hallelujah, is not our gender identity, not our sexual identity. <laughs> there are all kinds of identity now. You know, we, we have an identity now. We are in Christ. Hallelujah. And because we are in Christ, we have all the blessings. We are blessed with all blessings in Christ Jesus. We are adopted. We are redeemed. We are uh, forgiven. You know, we are sealed. We are, we are so many things in Christ. So this is one meaning what I understand that I am in Christ. The second layer of meaning or second aspect of it is the word participation. See, when Apostle Paul uses this word that we are in Christ, he, in, in Romans chapter 6, please take Romans chapter 6. So he, he uses this word like this. Chapter 6, verse 3. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into death? Therefore, we have been buried with him. In other words, when Jesus died, I participated with him in his death. When he was buried, I was buried. So that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. So, PowerPoint number two. In Christ means participating with him. The experience of Christ becomes our experience. We died with him, we were buried with him, we were resurrected with him, and now we are seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. What do you mean seated? That we have power. We are in position with Christ. By the way, it's all with Christ. If I am not in Christ, it's, it's not about me. It's with Christ. By virtue of the fact that I am in him and he is in me, I am seated with him. So that is why I cannot boast. Because all of these are coming because I am in Christ. I have not produced all this. All this has been given to me. In Malayalam there is a wonderful song, a line which says, That means I have not earned it. But all this has been Given to me in Christ Jesus. And now, you know, theologically, one very important thing which we have to remember is, Apostle Paul says that before we were in Christ, we were in, in Adam, actually. <laughs> because we were coming from that line, you know. We were sons of Adam, the fallen human race. And therefore, we were suffering all the consequences of being in Adam. Because I was in Adam, I was dead in my trespasses and sins. Because I was in Adam, death was reigning in me. Decay, death, darkness. So Romans chapter 5 says, 
in adam but now we who were in adam when we believed in christ jesus we have been brought in christ so first corinthians chapter 1 first corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 wonderful verse please note by his doing in your bibles you can just circle it that's very important you know somewhere people are not convinced most many believers are not convinced that it is his doing they think no 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 you know you know brother from the i was always nice you know as a sharif guy you know i was nice guy nice girl so god looked at me and said well done so he has blessed me by his doing you are in christ jesus who became to us wisdom from god righteousness and please even note the word sanctification and redemption hallelujah in christ jesus if you are in christ jesus God has made you righteous. He has set you apart. He has redeemed you. You are no longer in Adam. You are in Christ. Some great transfer has happened from that sinful human lineage. We have been transferred apostle paul uses the word we have been transferred from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son a great transfer has happened hallelujah to those who are believers hallelujah being in christ means participating with christ that was powerpoint number that second one number 3 now in christ also means that we are united with him in in some ways we have been joined to him now this spiritual reality god says through various ways and this is not an exhaustive list okay so it says that we are in the body of christ so we are now somehow we have been joined to him john chapter 15 you know it is written that he is the vine and we are the branches so there is some union that has happened i am in christ jesus i am joined to christ then there is this marriage metaphor we are joined the bride is joined with christ you know when apostle paul where is it is it first corinthians 6 or first corinthians chapter 6 please take first corinthians yeah first corinthians 6 you know he says that to you know don't be joined to a prostitute first corinthians chapter 6 verse 15 first corinthians chapter 6 verse 15 do you not know that your bodies are members of christ shall i then take away members of christ and make them members of a prostitute may it not be or do you not know that one who joins himself to a prostitute is one with her for he says the two shall become one flesh so there is something which happen when a person has physical relationship with a prostitute and then he says something astounding but the one who joins himself to the lord is one spirit with him 
Please understand, none of us are having sex with God. This I am saying to prevent some misunderstanding, you know, don't take the, the too literally. But there is something which happens when we believe in Christ, we are one with him. We are one with him, something, we, we are united with him, there is union with Christ. Please come back to that third PowerPoint that there is this unity. Now, when I am in Christ, I am united to him. His life flows through me. Hallelujah. His life flows through me. And when his life flows through me, I begin to be fruitful. Dear brothers and sisters, if you are a believer, if you are a disciple of Christ, you are joined with Christ. It's a fact. You are in him, he is in you. His life is flowing through you. And that is why Jesus Christ says that because you are in me, then you remain in me. <laughs> you abide in me. It is not that some other branch is coming and saying, I want to be joined to you. No. We have been made branches. We have been grafted in. We have become part of Christ. Now that we are part of Christ, abide in me and I in you. Remain in me and let my words remain in you. Remain in me. My words remain in you. Remain in my love. So as we remain in him, we continue to abide in him, there is wonderful fruitfulness which we can see in our life. So what does it mean to be in Christ? I have given just one more point. In Christ also means I am incorporated into him. Please read first. Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. You see, whenever we think about being in Christ, till now, I don't know how many of you thought about other people also. <laughs> For example, everybody is thinking that I and Christ, Christ and me, me and Christ. So, where are the others? Uh, verse 13, verse 13. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Can you all say with me, we were all baptized. Ah, not only me. I was baptized. You were baptized. You were baptized. We all, all who believed in Christ were baptized. So if all are baptized into one body, what will happen? We are also related with one another. So when repeatedly this in Christ thing comes, there is this whole thing about me being not only connected with Christ, me being connected with you, and you being connected with me. That is why there is that special fellowship. Just the other day I was telling some people, you know why I'm so excited to serve some people, you know? Because you belong to Christ. <laughs> I love Christ. And you belong to Christ. So I am very excited to serve you. Because through Christ we are connected. I may not know you. <laughs> that is why sometimes you meet a believer somewhere, you know, in the train or in the flight or somewhere. You just start talking to him and you feel that you have been long lost friends. There is that bonding which is there, you know, because we have one spirit. In Christ means we are incorporated into Christ. For by one spirit, we have been, you know, baptized into one body. Where do you think Apostle Paul might have got this idea, idea in this whole reality of in Christ? I can't say for sure, but at least it might have started on the road to Damascus. 
what happened on the road to Damascus? Here was Saul, you know, going to persecute in his zeal, going to persecute other Christians. And then he was thrown off that animal on which he was riding and he was blinded by a light which was like noonday sun. And then he heard a voice of Jesus saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting the believers? Why are you persecuting me? Worry. I'm sure when he was, uh, you see, when we are blind and you don't have much to read and do, <laughs> he might have, so two, three days, he was just thought, Kya yaar, why, why did he say, why are you persecuting me? I was not persecuting Jesus, I was persecuting his people. But Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? Which means he is in the believers and believers are in him. So that if believers are persecuted, he is persecuted. Of course, he might have got further revelations about this great reality that we are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. How can we come to Christ? In Christ. How can we become in Christ? It is the work of God. As I made you to read in 1 Corinthians 1.13, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. You cannot just jump into Christ, you know, like that. <laughs> it is a spiritual work. It's a transfer of a kingdom. Is it a small thing? Actually, when we are doing evangelism, I don't know how many of you realize it, when we are doing evangelism, it's a big subversive activity. It's a, you know, subversive activity means you're doing something against a kingdom, you know. What are you doing? You are asking people of a particular country or a kingdom, change your kingdom. <laughs> it is not a small thing at all. You know, I used to think that it's just a small matter of going and giving them like a marketing thing, you know what, you know, just believe in Christ, you know, he's a nice guy. You know, but the thing is, I used to think that evangelism is just, you know, like selling a product, yeah, you know, you know, I liked it, you might like it, try it, try Jesus, you know, like that. But whatever you may say or not say, basically what you're implying that, this man may be 30 year old, Okay? And you are saying 30 years he lived in one kingdom. You are saying, change your citizenship. Why? Why should I change? <laughs> and then if he changes, that country's people are going to be very angry with him. It is not a small thing that we are telling people in evangelism. Change your kingdom. Change your boss. All these days you were thinking something else, you were enjoying something else, and now saying, no, 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 this kingdom is not the thing, that kingdom is the thing. Ephesians chapter 1, I'm, I'm going to end. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Ephesians 1, verse 13. How is it that we come to Christ? What do we do? Ephesians 1, verse 13, 1, 3. In him also, you, in him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed. Two things. Listening. So someone has to speak. How can they listen if nobody is speaking? So we have to speak and people have to listen. After having listened to, please note, not listen to some, some prosperity message, uh, God will heal you, 
and uh, you know you you will have a great time you know what it's so nice you know now you're lonely and your loneliness will be gone all this may happen but that's not the message of truth what's the true gospel after hearing the true gospel after hearing the gospel of your salvation and i'm sure the gospel of salvation includes repentance turning away from sin that gospel includes what christ has done that includes a call to follow so in him you also having listened to the message of truth the gospel of your salvation and after listening to the gospel this person understands the the call to follow the call to repent the call to believe this person like abraham starts on a journey hallelujah hearing the call he also starts on a journey he went out not knowing where but he knew that god had called him hallelujah such people are the people whom god causes to be in christ some of you may be surprised to know that the word christian is used only three times in the bible most of the times the christians are called by the name either followers or disciples or people who are in him in christ so this morning time you see i want to encourage you all those of you who are in christ jesus i want to encourage you what god has done for you and me in christ jesus is stupendous is so great i has not seen ear has not heard nor has it entered anybody's even in their dreams that what god has done for us in christ jesus i am in him he is in me hallelujah i have been you know i said the first i am located in him can you all stand up please i'll just quickly run through that i am in him i am hidden with christ i am no longer alone i am no longer excluded i am no longer without god or without hope i am with god i am with hope i am amongst the people of god i am his and he is mine i am my beloved and he is mine so i am located in him that's the first thing which i want to say i am located in him second i am participating with him jesus christ died on the cross he was buried he was resurrected he is ascended he was glorified i am i also died with him i'm buried with him i'm resurrected with him i'm seated with him and i will be glorified i am no longer in adam hallelujah i am in christ i have been cut off from that lineage of adam in the sense of that death which was reigning in adam now hallelujah i am reigning in christ through the gift of righteousness that has been given to me i am reigning in this life and i am more than conqueror number 3 when i am in christ hallelujah i am united with him i am one with him his life flows through me his life energizes me the zoe life of god energizes my mortal you know just human jar of clay i have this treasure within me hallelujah hallelujah 
He loves me and I love him. I am united with him. Number four, I am in Christ. Through his spirit, I have been baptized into his body. I am a member of his body, but there are other members and I am joined to other members also through Christ. Hallelujah. So I am not alone in this world. I have other brothers and sisters who love me and who care for me. Hallelujah. I am a member of a family. Hallelujah. I am so glad, dear brothers and sisters, that I am in Christ. I hope you are also overflowing with gladness and in the coming days, this reality will continue to dawn in ever increasing measure to you of how much God has blessed you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah.